What's up, everyone? Let's get ready for round three of the Displains Illinois Battle Road between Craig Riffle on the left and Steve Bala on the right. Should be an interesting matchup. Both these players are 2 0 at this point, and we will see how exactly this plays out. Now, Steve has been playing for a little while, uh, he usually d judges a lot of events. I believe now he's starting to play a bit more, but uh, in the previous years, he did judge quite a bit. And Craig, I think he just started playing recently. I don't think he's been playing for too long. So we'll see how he does here. Uh, I've played against him in a tournament before. He knows what he's doing. So we'll, we'll see what happens. Now he did get to go first with a Thunderous. And he did not play anything except an energy and he charged. He got the Eevee Light as well. But looks like he either did not want to discard stuff or... He just doesn't have a supporter. Uh, I don't know which one it was. But he did not play a supporter the first turn. He just attached and used charge. So he's going to be threatening a turn 2 Disaster Volt, which is very strong, actually. Uh, you can knock out a Sableye. Um, as long as Steve doesn't confuse him. <laughs> so he's going to go for the Confuse Ray. Looks like he got Tails. He won't take any damage because of the Eevee Light. And no, it does not look like Craig has any supporters. I thought I saw Juniper in there before, but definitely not. Still, he's going to be able to Disaster Volt, take the knockout there. And he's still going to be putting a lot of pressure on Steve here. Um, that, that Sableye is probably going to be knocked out next turn. He doesn't even have a Dino in play. And again, he has to Juniper his hand away. Yikes. So that's, uh, he had to just discard a, a third Juniper as well. So this is a really bad start. For Steve, uh, this is ugly. And he doesn't even have another basic. So he's going to go for another Confuse Ray, get another Tails. If if Craig has a Tool Scrapper, this game is over. This could be a quick, quick game, folks. Um, Thunderous could just storm through Steve's field and win turn three. If he can draw a Tool Scrapper or a Plus Power if he plays that. The Eevee Light is saving... Steve by 10 hit points. Uh, that thing is just 10 hit points away from being knocked out. So, can Craig draw the the plus power or tool scrapper off of this end? Uh, I don't think he plays plus power. Most people don't. He may not play tool scrapper either. Not every deck plays that. But he might. So, this is going to be a suspenseful 5 cards here for Craig. And Steve, of course, will draw 6. But no, does not look like he got it. He got a Sky Arrow Bridge out there, and at least he has a supporter. He did have to give Steve a brand new hand of six, which is painful, but I'm sure he'll live with that. And he's going to just Disaster Volt again for 60 damage this time. Steve's got to be uh, breathing in a sigh of relief there. And can, oof, almost lost the game there. My Sableye has held the fort, though. And now he's just going to attach that blend onto his Sableye. He's got a Dino in play. The good news for Steve is that he's got a ton of trainers in his discard pile that he had to discard. So there are options for him to just get them back with Junk Hunt. Um, either that or he can Confuse Ray. He has a Supporter in hand, but I don't think he used one. But he did Confuse poor Thunderous there. So this is... Kind of a fast-paced game, uh, a big change of pace from the last one with Abe and uh, Jason, where everything is just kind of methodical, slow. These guys are fast-paced players. They're just getting right to the point, you know, not going to spend too much time thinking about the move. And now Craig's got a weird decision. His Thunderous is paralyzed. I don't think he has. Well, he's got a double call list, but he doesn't have too much to work with. I mean, he could switch. And then retreat with the free retreat from Sky Arrow. And then charge if he really wants to. Or attach and do 60 with Disaster Volt. Um, not really good options either way. If he had a catcher, that would be huge. That would be knocking out that dino, taking that off of Steve's field. And I think at that point, Craig would be very, very far ahead. He would be in a winning position. Um, he puts down the Zekrom EX. I'm not sure why he didn't do that previously. That would have been something good to have down on your board. Just so you draw the extra card from Bianca. But nonetheless, 
Looks like he is going to go for a pass. Or looks like he's going to charge. I don't think he flipped for confusion, though. He was confused, right? I think so. Oh, well. <laughs> uh, let's see. Oh, yeah. Looks like they just realized... Oops. You um, did not flip for confusion. <laughs> uh, and now... It's kind of a weird situation. I mean, I guess it's not the biggest deal in the world. But... I mean, that's really not how things should happen. But it's okay. Nothing too incredible. I mean, it doesn't, like, break the game state or anything. Um, I mean, Craig had just looked through his deck with a level ball anyway. His deck was random. So, looking through, shuffling again, doesn't really matter. So, as long as Steve doesn't care, we're like, alright... I know that probably wasn't the way things are supposed to be, but we'll let it happen. We don't want to make a big stink about this, because I, I know it's not that big of a deal. So, kudos to Steve for not making a big deal out of it. You know, realizing, oh, we both messed up, we both missed the confusion. Not a big deal. We'll just reverse it. We'll move on. So let's just forget that happened. There's now three damage counters on Thunderous from the confusion damage. So that's... Uh, I'm not sure how relevant that damage actually will be. It might be, though. 30 damage could come into play with some Night Spears later. Uh, you know, just maybe even the bench damage. Maybe if Steve has a Tool Scrapper, he can discard that Eviolite and Night Spear the Thunderous for a knockout. But who knows? Now, what does Steve do here? He's got a Dark Patch. He's finally got a Dark Cry out here. And we'll see what happens. Now... I don't think anyone really has the advantage at this point. You might think, well, Craig, obviously, he's got the prize lead. He's got a Thunderous powered up. He's ready to go. But it's a very fickle matchup if you're the Electric player. You need to get a bunch of Electrics into play. Because once Darkrai starts just catching out your um, Electrics and Night Spearing them, taking away your Energy Acceleration, big comebacks can happen. I've seen it happen a lot. The electric deck gets up like two prizes or something like that. And then Darkrai comes out. They they use their first Darkrai, even if it gets knocked out, to just catch up electrics. Night Spear, knockout, 30 on another Tynamo or something like that. And then they go from there. I mean, once you run out of energy acceleration, you pretty much lose. And Darkrai ends up winning. <laughs> uh, let's see. We do have... Uh, Craig played a Juniper there. He discarded quite a few things. Looks like he discarded a couple Charons from that. And we'll have to see. He has a switch in hand. He could switch to Tynamo, retreat, and then attach to his Thunderous. And then Disaster Volt for the knockout. He is still confused. That does not go away at any point unless you bench the Thunderous. So I think it's in his best interest to just play a switch here. And retreat back. Or, or you can retreat first and then switch. That works as well. Uh, I don't think you want to use your Zekrom EX for this. You would much rather just switch. Take the guaranteed prize with Disaster Volt. Uh, you could take the risk with Glinting Claw, of course. But I feel like that's an unnecessary risk. Where you could just switch anyway. So you might as well just do that. But he's going to go for it. Glinting Claw. And he gets ahead. So it pays off. Uh, he'll take off that Sableye. And now he's got that scary Zekrom EX with 3 energy there. This is actually a very big card in this matchup. If Steve does manage to get a High Dragon out this turn, which it looks like he will. Because he's got the Ultra Ball and a Rare Candy in hand. Uh, Zekrom EX can actually catch that out. And then Strong Volt for 150 and knock it out. Which is a very, very big play. You're going to take away the High Dragon, the Energy Manipulator... And that's just basically the key to beating this deck. If they can't move energy around, then, well, they turn into just a normal Darkrai deck, which you should be able to handle. But it looks like Steve doesn't have any supporter beyond this, so all he's going to be able to do is Night Spear. Uh, we'll see if that's enough to carry him to victory. I think he has a Max Potion in hand as well. So maybe. But it's going to be tough. Darkrai is really tough for Electric to deal with. There's no simple answer for them to respond to it. 
You know, you can have Mewtwo if you get enough energy, sure. You'll get the knockout. But that's not too likely anymore without Shaman in the formats. You can't just move all your energy to a Mewtwo. That just doesn't happen anymore. So Mewtwo getting a one-hit knockout on Darkrai is not too likely. Uh, I don't really know what else you could do. I mean, unless you play Terrakian or Rayquaza, you don't have a way to knock out a Darkrai in one hit. That's what I'm getting at here. And when they play Max Potions, they have Hydreigon in play, what do you do? There's not much you can do. So it looks like Craig is attached to the active. He's got another Electric in play, so that's helpful. I think I would prefer to see him just a Dynamotor to his Thunderous, retreat the Zekrom EX, and Disaster Volt for 80 this turn. Force Steve to have a catcher here to get a knockout. Or he even has a Max Potion in hand. So, I mean, he already used his attachment for the turn, so that would be kind of a, a waste. But if you wanted to heal off your Zekrom EX, you would, heal, you would retreat to the Thunderous after you Dynamotor to it. And Max Potion the Zekrom EX. But it looks like he's just going to Strong Volt for 150. Now, the big problem I have with this, obviously, is just Max Potion. Where you can just move all the energy off and go, hey, all the damage is gone. And now I just took two prizes. So just like this, Steve will actually take the lead in this game, I think. Um, not the prize lead, he will tie up the prizes, I think. But he is going to be way ahead in this game. I mean, he's going to knock out the Zekrom EX, take two prizes. The only thing left to play for Steve is, or for Craig. And oh, wait a second, he discarded his electric. That should only have 60 damage on it. <laughs> uh, you don't need to discard that one yet, Craig. Alright, there we go. That would have been a, a big blunder that we would have caught on camera, but it's okay. You can see Craig's a little nervous. I think, like I said before, he is kind of a newer player. I don't know how experienced he is at tournaments. So, a few jitters are perfectly understandable. He does have a Max Potion in hand. He's got a Mewtwo. He's going to probably just start going with a Mewtwo at this point. And just go, you know what? It's time to X-Ball. It's really my only plan at this point. He should uh, definitely Max Potion that Electric. Because otherwise, Steve can have a huge play where he catches out one Electric, Night Spears, hits the other one for 30, and knocks out both at once, and that is absolutely devastating. That is the one thing you want to avoid. It's actually why you play Max Potion and Electric to begin with. It's just too easy for Darkrai to build up the Night Spear damage with the 30 to the bench. There's nothing you can do about it, and oh, he does not play the Max Potion! Decides to Juniper instead. I'm not sure what's going on with uh, Craig there. He definitely could have just removed the 60 damage from Electric, and now... He's going to be giving up a prize for no reason. And this isn't um, like a plan or anything. There's nothing really in the format that says, all right, I'm giving up a prize on purpose to take advantage of it. I mean, there's tracking where you can retaliate. But other than that, which Craig doesn't even play, there, there's nothing that really benefits from, you know, I'm giving up a prize. So, definitely, definitely a strange play not using the Max Potion there. And here we go. This is absolutely devastating. He's going to take both Electrics out of play. Um, he actually goes down to two prizes at this point as well. So really the only thing standing between Steve and Victory after this turn is a Mewtwo. And he has to knock out his opponent's Mewtwo, whether that means he plays his own. Um, I don't know if he plays like Sigilyph. There's probably something in his deck that can knock out a Mewtwo. And that's really all it's going to come down to. And I, I don't see any other way around it. For this turn, he should probably just attach the Double Colorless to his Mewtwo. And probably just play the N. Hope that Steve doesn't draw anything for the rest of the game. I would not catch or anything, but looks like he's going to catch or something. <laughs> uh, he brings up the High Dragon. Not sure why he would do this. He's only got 6 energy on his Mewtwo. That is too short of a knockout. So he's going to do 120. That thing's not weak to Psychic, it's weak to Dragon. So the 
the definite better play there was to just X-Ball the Darkrai with three energy on it. Um, that would have done, let's see, six, nine, would have done 160. Or one, 160, yeah. So he was actually one short of knocking out that Darkrai straight away. Uh, 160 damage is nothing to scoff at, obviously. And then next turn, I, th I mean, and it looks like uh, Craig actually thought he knocked out the High Dragon. So he actually took a prize and then put it back. So that was uh, a bit of a mistake as well. But that's alright. We'll just keep pressing on here. I think Steve should win this game within a couple turns here. Um, he's got the Sableye down. But, it, I mean, now this could still go Craig's way. I think Steve is just trying to go for, you know what, I'm going to get Mewtwo, I'm going to win the game. Uh, maybe he's going to junk hunt this turn and just kind of go for that and say, you know what, I am just going to go for my Ultra Ball and the next turn I'll get Mewtwo, move on my energy to Mewtwo and X-Ball for the win. The problem with that strategy is if Craig gets a catcher, he can knock out Steve's Hydreigon. And then Steve can't move the energy. And then Steve's got a Mewtwo with a ton of energy he's staring down. And it might actually just run through his board. Um, so this is a very, very tricky situation. If Craig somehow manages to draw a catcher off this, which he probably should. He hasn't played too many of them. This should be a knockout high dragon situation. And a win, I think. Like, it's way too difficult for Steve to come back from that. So Craig still has an opportunity in this game. He needs to draw a catcher here off these three cards, though. And, oh, he whiffed. So no... No X-Ball magic this game, I don't think. Uh, that should pretty much be it. I really think he had the game if he had the catcher there. Uh, I mean, it wasn't completely over, but... Just imagine what happens um, when the High Dragon gets knocked out. There's a Mewtwo with six energy sitting there. <laughs> and that's uh, it's just one attachment away from knocking out the Darkrai in one hit. And then he takes all of the energy out of Steve's board. And then X-Ball just knocks out one more thing and it's game over. So you can see... That was just a catcher away from completely blowing this game up. And now all it is for Steve is going to Ultra Ball, uh, discarding the N, and the Super Ride, he's going to grab Mew, Mew 2 or Mew EX, I think he actually plays Mew EX. And there it is, there's the Mew, he's just going to move all his energy to it and X Ball for the game. So, looks like Steve Bala will win this match, he will be 3-0 at this Display Ins Illinois Battle Road. We'll have some more interesting matchups coming up soon. I am Puka from the Top Cut, and I will see you guys for the next one.